right, we're back. Good morning, folks, at the Vintage Hotel. Hope you're having a great stay. Uh, back here with Glenn Trainer, Winter Park, Fraser Police Department Chief. And Glenn, uh, before we get into the next hot topic, uh, what do you think about this this news story about people who claim that their body's making a brewery? Have you heard about this? They're avoiding DUIs by saying that my body takes sugar and makes alcohol, and so I can't control the fact that I'm under the influence. I read that article. Sounds and, bogus uh, to me. But well, the only thing I can say is maybe that person shouldn't be driving a vehicle that's, anyway. That was my. That was right. Exactly. <laughs> should just be done driving. Period. Right, License gone. Right. Problem solved. You know. But that was a new one. I just heard that like a week or two ago. Now apparently multiple people are claiming this new disorder. That I'd like to meet the doctor that identified that. But that's like okay. the old glaucoma thing, right? Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> well, no, I don't. What's that? <laughs> right. But uh, so, question. Hot topic number two. So obviously, a lot of press out there with the police officer's relationship with the communities they serve. I think, it personally, from what I can tell, we have a wonderful relationship with our police officers. I've never heard a bad word about them. So I think we have a great reputation up here for that. Um, but still, every department's look, taking a close look at having body cameras and more accountability um, on both sides. That's correct. You know, I, I can't say strongly enough how proud I am of our community and the relationship that uh, they've developed with the police department and vice versa because it really is a two-way street mm -hmm. you know it, it takes both sides and and uh you know i i feel like our community has accepted us with open arms and of course we work very hard to maintain those partnerships not only with our citizens but our guests who come in and i really see us as as taking on kind of an ambassador role for all the people that come in here and maybe don't know their way around get lost maybe uh you know because they're on vacation they're not understanding that the rules still apply and yeah. and uh, and that kind of thing but I I think it's just uh, you know it's really the best job I've ever had working here be, because of that relationship so you really do like the tourist atmosphere or the tourism atmosphere I should say. oh absolutely yeah I think uh, you know we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for tourism and uh, and uh, you know the more we can do to help those folks out and help them have a good time while they're here the better off we all and are. I'm sure our culture up here is a far cry from a big city and some of the struggles that you see going on and oh it absolutely Baltimore's is the, yeah so yeah, I worked in the Denver area for eight years, and I'll tell you, there's no Oh, so there's you have no spent comparison. some time working in the city? I have, yes. That'll make you really appreciate that small town, to raise your family and all yes. that. I can, now I can understand that. Okay. So body cameras. I mean, you know, I don't know much about what's going on there as far as our own police department. Uh, is that something that people have been pushing for or not really? You know, we really haven't seen a push for it here in the community, but I, I think nationally that push is there. And, and I'm uh, sure you're taking a more proactive approach because no one wants to wait until there's people pushing for a reason. That's you'd correct. Have it, and then I can avoid those reasons. Then we don't have an issue. Well, and I think uh, you know the the research done by IACP, the International Association of Chiefs of Police, and uh, some other organizations show that that uh, when officers are equipped with cameras of some type, that ninety five percent of the time the complaints that are levied against them are found to be unfounded. And, and I think that shows nationally that we really do have good police officers mm -hmm. and law enforcement officers out there. But a lot of times, you know, it's a he said, he said kind of thing, and, and there's really no clear answers. Uh, and, and then there's always going to be what media wise and people right. taking sides without even knowing what happened. Right. And, or without uh, having all the facts. And of course, there are some bad apples on both sides. So there is going to sure. be an officer that does something. I mean, they're all human beings, and there's some bad apples well, that's in every exactly group. Right. So no matter what group we're talking about, even Bronco fans might have a bad apple or two in the in the mix. But clearly, but uh, so we're. I mean, some pros and cons of having a body camera on you. I well, mean, I, I think the pros are is, is that it provides great documentation yeah. that the officer can use that will enable better prosecutions in the future. Maybe reduce the amount of time they spend in court. Uh, provide that officer with the video backup that he needs to show why he took the actions he did. Some of the cons to that are the fact that there is no perfect camera out there that is going to see everything the officer sees, or it, the camera might see more than the officer sees. Um, officers have to make judgments based on split sec right. second things that happen. Slow motion doesn't happen in real life. That's I mean, correct, yeah. And, and uh, you know, and it's really hard to armchair quarterback a decision that an officer makes based on only the information he had at the time. Uh, some of the other cons that are about it are privacy issues for our citizens. You know, as an example, we go to a house, they're having a medical emergency or a family member may have passed away in the middle of the night. I mean, I just don't know that that's something that needs to be part of the public record, that family's anguish and uh, all the things that they're going through when something like that happens. So do you have a stance? Well, uh, we are actually uh, uh, in the process of uh, selecting and purchasing body oh, so cameras. so this will be in place? 
That's for correct. Our local police department. Yeah, and, and uh, I've been a little bit slower than some agencies have in, in doing that because I want to make sure it get, gets done right the right. first time. I, I want to not only protect our officers and provide them the tools that they need to do their job, but I also want to make sure that they're deployed in a manner that uh, provides us the accountability to our public that we need to have. So did you have to put together a proposal to a budget committee of some sort to get this done, or what kind of dollars are we talking here? Um, I put together a proposal for both my town managers uh, late summer, early fall, presented that to them. Now we will engage in the selection process of the cameras themselves. I think uh, the must be some businesses making a killing off this. Oh, I, I think nationally, it's probably. <laughs> I should have bought some stock and police officer cameras. You know. Yeah, the, yeah. nationally, it's probably the the fastest emergency merging technology, and and I think five years from now, it's going to look a lot different than it even does today. I mean, are we talking like GoPro things like that you're wearing, kind of similar to one of the shred heads might have in the train park? You know the. Uh, the, the cameras that most officers are carrying right now are probably about the size of their microphone and oh, the radio. Tiny little, yeah, okay. they're, they're fairly small. And, uh, but pick up audio, video. They'll pick up audio, okay. video. A lot of them have infrared illuminators. Uh, and you know, is, it, is it all being saved in a chip on them or is it, it good? It actually sensor? is being saved in the camera itself. And the cool thing about these cameras is that once you hit the record button, it automatically goes back and records anywhere from 10 seconds to a minute prior to when the officer hit the record button. So it's always recording, it's oh, just overriding it's, ah, that's itself. That's crazy, okay. Yeah. So you hit the record button and, uh, and then you have like 30 seconds prior to that that uh, is actually recorded. The officer can then review that. Uh, he doesn't have the ability to, re to change it or anything. He can just review it to help him with his uh, investigation. Wow, there's a lot of interesting points there. That's uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. But I'm glad to hear we're going that direction. It's going to appease the public for sure because there's definitely yes. been a lot of public outcry that absolutely the technology's there now. We can all accept that, and right. so why not use it? So, all right, well, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back and talk a little more about the local traffic and some of the changes we've seen uh, locally around here. Okay, uh, Glen Train, Winter Park, and Fraser Police Department. We'll be back shortly.